Mechanics. Lovely. Thank you very much. I suppose the sooner we start, the sooner we can start thinking about lunch and so on. So um, we at Wellington Academy are quite fortunate. We started off as a school three years ago. So we've been kind of building from the ground upwards and we've been really lucky that all the way throughout it we can just pretty much dip bits of enterprise into the curriculum without having to be too constrained. Um, one of the easiest ways to do it that we found in, in schools is through encounter days. Now that's what we call them but it's effectively days off timetable where you can have events, challenges, uh, things that might be inherently entrepreneurial in activity for students. We've had um, an enterprise day and now I've got a handout which shows links to all of these things but we had year fives designing a healthy eating restaurant just out of interest who's um, primary here yeah, awesome cool thank you so just one person but this will apply to to you and but also can apply to, to all the year groups as well um, we've had things such as yeah like I say designing a healthy eating restaurant uh, we even had our little FS2 students um, working. That was what they were, they were given jobs to do throughout the week. So one, one of the little, um, like sort of four, I think they're four, four and five, they, they were given the job of holding doors open, for example. And they'd stand there and the door would be heavier than them and they might have a little bit of help from their friend and that kind of thing. But by the end of it, they were given uh, what we, would, we described as reward tokens. So thank you for doing that end of the week they were able to buy rewards at the, at the party that they had for their FS2 students. So again, I'm sorry that only applies to, to our primary colleague in the room, but uh, that was another thing. We had uh, a secondary history students conducting um, a murder mystery. Now, I don't, what, what I don't profess to do is um, be the great creator of things and entrepreneurial. I think who was it? Somebody said, uh, I think it might have been Bill Gates actually, an intelligent person <coughs> creates a genius steals. Now again, neither, nor am I professing to become a genius, but all of this is openly available on the web. TESS, which uh, test.co.uk, for those um, colleagues who teach in English curriculum schools, brilliant for all of these kinds of activities. Um, like I said, it, it was a murder mystery we had in drama. Uh, an emergency based scenario where London had been flooded and it's a, a, I think it was done by the, by the Red Cross and the students had to design um, an escape plan for the whole population of London uh, and by doing that they're being entrepreneurial in the fact that they're challenging themselves, they're being risk takers, they're assessing uh, risk and reward, they're assessing the value of things, you only have one million pounds that will get you four million inhabitants of London. What are the other three million going to do? And asking questions like that. And so they have to decide between them. These are just some examples um, that we have. At uh, Wellington Academy, again, because we've been building from the ground upwards, we have what we call, uh, well, opening minds. It's taken from opening minds, which the, the RSA Academy in the UK uh, instigated effectively. Now our, our principal was the former principal of the RSA Academy. I would urge you to look into Opening Minds. It is a competence-based <laughs> curriculum um, based on the national curriculum for England. We have it in year seven at the moment and it's expanding into year eight from this September. Uh, so because we're an English curriculum school up until post-16 and then we go into IB diploma and IBCC as well. So for us, that leads, in, uh, leads very well into, um, into the IB and the competence-based approach uh, that, the, that the IB curriculum is, would, would appear to be moving. It definitely is in my subject. I don't know about all. Um, we came up with a theatre production, theater production. Now, I put, I put the very well-used Dragon's Den, and I'm sure you saw this when you got the list, Everyone's like Dragon's Den and Apprentice, and it's and it's and the concept is is I would argue better than the program. So the concept of the Dragon's Den, uh, sorry, 
yet the Dragon's Den is effectively what you might describe as the elevator pitch. For those who are not familiar with it, forgive me. Uh, so for those who are, forgive me. A minute to put forward your idea. What is it? And we gave students within the Opening Minds curriculum an entrepreneurial take on a theatre production. They had to create their own theatre production company. And they had to sell their production company to, to parents. Parents had to uh, not physically pay. Well, they, they physically pay anyway. But uh, parents had to pay with uh, little tokens that they were given for, I think it was 100,000 dirhams. And the most successful out of those uh, students got, I think it was 40 or 50 house points at the end of it. So they had, they had a real carrot. That was their, their real drive to do that. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any of the students here to, to do that with me today. But I do have some of the parental reviews. And as we all know, parental um, ideas are very important. Parental feedback is massively important. Um, our students, I think that was the winning group, actually, from this, from this section. But parental feedback was, one, they got involved with it. Ironically, and I'm sure um, those, those schools who are, who are involved in presenting on the day had the KHDA research team come out to us. Now, through, through some twist of fate, this was happening on the afternoon that the KHDA research team came out. So that's part, part of the reason, possibly, why, why I'm standing here today. But students put together the theatre company, gave um, their pitch to parents, and parents chose, and students won. And I think for, for me, enterprise it needs to um, it needs to base itself around certain guidelines. And in terms of the curriculum, I'll show you some guidelines later on that you can hopefully introduce uh, in your own schools from this. We also, um, in year 10, have a program. Now, this, this is specifically English curriculum, uh, although as far as I'm aware, the qualifications you're able to sit internationally as long as you're an accredited centre by the exam board. We use um, a Year 10 Enterprise and Employability Qualification, which is a Level 1 or 2 certificate, which is done by AQA, who are an English exam board. We do a 60-hour course in 30 hours. As part of that qualification, we have what students have to do, which is called the Enterprise Project. Now, I thought upon conception we could trust the students possibly and send them out to do this in their own time. Because their coursework hinges on it, we wanted to do it in a bit more of a controlled environment. So we ended up doing it in school, and students would be creative. And a lot of them, if I'm perfectly honest, made materials for a bake sale. That, that was about the sum of it. Some students sold t-shirts. But at the end of it, and this is a really important part in the process, and I know Amal had alluded to this earlier on, is the review. It's the constant review. What, is what I'm doing good enough? Now, the benefit of this is that students get to review, but they also get credit for the depth of their review because it goes towards their coursework. 30% coursework, 70% exam, uh, and it develops a variety of skills. Um, these are some of the, the, the names of the topics. So there's financial awareness in there. There's um, re responsibilities and ethics, which again leads very much into the competency-based approach. If you're from an IB school, I know that will be uh, instilled and you'll, you'll dream about it and all that kind of thing. So v very much leads into that. And the, the practical nature of the project meant that 50 students this year raised a total of 5,648 dirhams for UNICEF. And it's the Schools, the schools for Asia um, fund that we're, we're currently taking on in the GEMS group as our, as our not, I wouldn't say pet project, but our, our focus for fundraising. Um, so like I say, that, that, that kind of dwarfs what we made last year when there was a lot fewer students. Uh, but you know, it's, it's, it's not, not a small sum at all. So that's the year 10 enterprise employability. On the handout, which obviously you can, you can grab at the end should you wish, I've got uh, web links to all of these qualifications so you can review them yourself should you wish to. 
Next bit along, uh, this is our first year. Oh, in fact, if I go quickly back, in terms of success when implementing this, we had a 95% pass rate. So 95% of students came out with either a level one or a level two certificate. Um, the one student, and it's because it was directly 20 students in the year group taking it last year, the one student who didn't pass came partway through the year. So we consider that quite, quite a, a success. Um, and as we know, when we're sending students on to employment or further education, for a student to be competitive in that workplace means, or that education sphere means absolutely everything. So what we're giving students who take a level one or a level two is effectively um, a GCSE short course equivalent. So it's again, not, not to mention the skills that they can develop from it. Um, first time through this year is uh, year 11 preparation for working life. So yes, it's entrepreneurial, maybe not as inherently so, but we think it has more, I would say a professional grounding, but equally all of our year 10 and 11 students will come out with two additional qualifications for what, what we would consider, well it's not a minimal amount of work because it's a qualification, but a lot less work than if they had to take that on independently. We currently timetable it in uh, what we class as cultural studies in UK curriculum schools. It may be um, a PSHE or something similar to that. But we currently timetable it in, in that, and it has proved successful. We've had to rush the kids through it in some cases, but, but they have, they have um, when I say rush, because of the nature of the course, because it's 60 hours guided teaching time, and we've been doing it in, I think we've done just under 20 hours this year, although we haven't quite finished. So, so we do ask a lot of the students, but they respond very well to it because it has the, the end game, if you like. You know, they're getting a qualification out of it, so they're quite motivated. Now, th that, that's it, as far as that goes. What I will show you in terms of uh, the guidance for curriculum, if you just give me one moment, in terms of the guidance for curriculum, uh, there we go. We have, um, and again, I, what I don't profess is to have invent, invented this, but we have a, a guidance, if you like, which we call the three strands for enterprise education. Now, I did take this from the internet somewhere. I can't actually reference my source, which is terrible practice, um, but somebody out there has put that on as well, so I'm sure you can, you can lift that from them. Um, this th if you give me a second, I'll just try and zoom it in slightly, so we can... Um, yes, please. That's what I'll do. Um, now, we consider these, broadly speaking, if you make ticks from each of these boxes, broadly speaking, then uh, an activity is enterprising because a lot of the question about enterprise when when you hear about enterprise in a curriculum it's oh well, well it's to do with making money I've had people come to me and suggest that enterprise is to do with um, work experience predominantly it's people trying to give me the job of work experience but with with that I think there needs to be a little bit of a focus and explain that although enterprise is Definitely, a part of it is risk-taking and financial management. It's a little bit more than that, and in fact, can span all subjects, all subjects, all age groups, and therefore is not just something that you have to focus on with business students or with economic students or anything like that. Like I said, we've done, we've done enterprise through year fives. We've, we've done it right from FS1 right up to year 12. So it, it is that broad. Now, some of, or, or one of the strands in the middle, and now this was taken from a report um, that was done in about 2002 by a gentleman in the UK about enterprise education in UK schools. 
and it was deemed to be lacking. Some of the, the upshot of it was that, that effectively a checklist was put together. Enterprise capabilities are skills that we want from all of our students, in, in my opinion. So teamwork, working to deadlines, all students will need to do that at some point. All of us need to do it now, I suppose. We've got the business and economic understanding, which does subject-wise push that further, especially in a secondary school, into the business realm. And then financial capabilities, which again, equally you can teach through design technology, maths, maths projects that we've had before. Um, we called it property tycoon. We had lots of little building blocks. Students had to um, calculate angles to find out how many, um, it was effectively a, a dumbed down quantity surveying task that the students had to complete. Angles, quantities, cost, analysis of that. And we brought that together in an activity. Now, I do have a host of, of activities and ideas. A lot of them are linked on this sheet. So obviously, like I say, I'll, I'll hand those out to you in, in, uh, in due course. Now, that was a whistle-stop tour of enterprise in the curriculum. Are there any questions? Or have I covered everything? I'd be flabbergasted. Out of interest, who comes from um, a, an English curriculum school? Okay. American curriculum school? Indian school? And national school? Excellent. Good. So there's a good, a good broad spread. If I were to ask you, and I'm sorry this is putting you on the spot, if I were to ask around the room what types of entrepreneurial activities have you done so far in your curriculum? What, what, what are they? What have, or that you might class as entrepreneurial? Thank you. Where we are now, <coughs> sorry, we do all the, I'm a business teacher, so yep. we do sort of Dragon's Den, we do the apprentice task, we do all that type of stuff. Um, but one of my colleagues who has sat in another uh, room at the moment, he, he does the gardening club and then they've just started from that a, um, a store that sells the produce, reinvests the produce, um, so that, that's going quite well. And I've come from an enterprise school back in the UK, Me too, yeah. Yeah, where we did all the five enterprise days a year and we did all the, we did everything from creating CDs, yeah. um, we did playing cards, setting up businesses, uh, having the business students plan and produce the uh, school productions to make them self-funded projects. Yeah. So, the, the, but that was just because obviously coming from the UK, there was a big emphasis on it years ago. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, and, and the school that I came from had had exactly the same specialism, business and enterprise college status. Um, I think my, the big the biggest thing that I have is you, you know when when you have in a um, in a school you have let's say the Emirates Literature Festival. So traditionally, the English department take hold of that. And they go, oh, well, it's books, then that's ours. And then you have um, a, a school production, and then it's the drama department and the music department. And you, you, what I've tried to do is to get away from pigeonholing um, activities that go on and to try and make enterprise, wherever possible, cross-curricular, because it is. It really is. And, and some of the activities that you've spoken about, your, you know, your school, they, they, are, they tend to be inherently enrichment or after school club or lunch club. And if there is a possibility to entwine enterprise into your school day, then it stops being an add-on and becomes a part of what you do. And, and that's, that's what we're, we're really trying to, to promote at, at our at our academy, we've got what we describe as um, uh, we want all students to be, to be digitally literate. We want students to be financially literate, and that it does fall into enterprise. And part of well, yeah, one of one of my jobs in the school is that I'm enterprise coordinator. So I we we have a there, there is a paid role for that in school, and so if things are successful in an enterprise then I'll know about it. If they're not equally, I'll know about it. But to date, I would like to think that our curriculum has been quite, um, quite forward thinking. And 
with our year seven and eight curriculum because we don't have the we don't have we have it has a national curriculum for England basis, but it doesn't have a national for curr curriculum for England. Um, I'm not going to say cage because that's unfair. Uh, it doesn't have the walls around it. It's, it's, it's based on it, but not, not even loosely. It is based on it, but we, we have flexibility with how we teach it, if I put it that way. From, and thank you very much for your contribution. From other schools, um, what other activities have, have, have you done? Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Gauri. Hi. And uh, arts is basically just a primary school, right? it's just from kindergarten to grade five. So um, uh, basically, we don't term it as enterprise in our school or in our curriculum, but all of these activities are already integrated with the um, uh, class activities that they have been doing, either a collaborative work or um, you know, like a team work, but then they're just getting together. Yeah. And ours is like, uh, we have enriched the curriculum. I'm the head of curriculum, actually, mm. in my school. So it's not just an Indian curriculum. It's not just a CBSE curriculum. Mm. But we have enriched it by taking um, uh, um, specific objectives from international curricula. So if I see that, you know, like uh, this particular country has performed really well, I've taken um, the objectives from there and I've integrated that into our curriculum. Yeah. Now, how we uh, execute the curriculum is all based on the um, student-initiated student as well as its activity based. So most of this we already, we don't term it as enterprising. And also like um, one of the activities that is most popular in our school is like uh, if we have groups of students working, basically grades three, four, five, if I see if they are working and then um, it's kind of a market sale activity. At the end of that activity, they're supposed to work in groups mm -hmm. and the leader is supposed to uh, be stationed there in, her, in his or her group. And the other groups are going to rotate uh, in other groups in within two minutes. The leader is supposed to sell his idea, his mm. group idea. Yes, the, the elevator yeah. pitch type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. brilliant. Uh, that is the thing that we have introduced recently. Yeah. So, so they, they know it, you know, how to convince other people who are coming onto their tables to sell the idea. Yeah. So, you know, basically, uh, and then we have a voting. So um, if, you, if you like this leader's idea, you know, you can just put your thumbs up or thumbs down. Mm. So that is a, just a motivating tool for them as of now. So they're just young kids. You know, so of course, of course. It's not really... We don't term that enterprise. Yeah. And, and I think that's a really important thing as well, is if somebody comes to you and says, do you do enterprise? You probably do, if I'm being perfectly honest. But sometimes the classification of what is enterprise can be, um, can be sort of lost in the ether. Well, 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 that's maths. Well, it can be enterprise because you can build business and economic standing, understanding and financial capability into it. And so, yeah, classifying what you already do as enterprise, I think, is an important angle to take as well. Sorry, I'd seen your hand up for. We have the student related policies that organize events like talent shows and bake sales. Brilliant. Things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. So, like, like very much down the extracurricular yeah. route, um, and 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 my focus, because it is part of my job, is to try and integrate all of that into our curriculum. Again, equally, we're quite lucky that for two hours on a Monday afternoon, our students, as part of the timetable day, have enrichment activities. So, for example, we have, you know, uh, rather than timetabling it after school, we have it in, in the school day. The school day is a little bit longer than it was last year, but all students access it as well. So making it fully inclusive was, uh, was, was an important part of that as well. Hello. Good day. I'm from Nigeria. Nice to meet you. So, uh, we've come to learn so that we can improve on what we have. Mm. Now, in our school system curriculum in Nigeria, like you were saying, every child should be involved in what you are teaching us. But we have a system where we allow children to choose the aspects they want to specialize on, yeah. they can do well. Mm. Like in this aspect, we have children that we group them as commercial students, they do economics, they do commerce, they do accounting, while the rest are different from that aspect entirely. Yeah. So now my question is, now that we have come, is there any curriculum that you can give us so that we look at it and from there, because 
by sitting here, we can get everything that will help us. We need a document we have to look at. Yeah. And it will help us so that it won't make impact on improvement. To be able to have such documents, sit down, study, and then know where to apply it appropriately. And you notice another thing is, you know, we have some private schools. Uh, some of them run different curriculum apart from the government curriculum. They include some, say, international curriculum, some, say, American curriculum, some, say, different, different yeah. things. Yeah, so now that we have come here, there is any such a document. Yes. There, there are, and in fact, like I, like I said, there's, um, there's, a, there's a lot of links to these. Now, what, what I couldn't do was print all of those out because um, the, uh, I think the, the top two documents here are something in the region of 130 pages long. So there's, there's documents that you can print off that you can take away with you, which literally have off-the-shelf ideas that you can implement into your curriculum tomorrow. So yeah, there's, there's, a, there's, a lot, there's a lot in these. Now, when it comes to curriculum planning, because these are, especially the year 10 project, well, the year 10 enterprise and employability course and the year 11 preparation for working life course, because they're, they're rel relatively new, uh, I, I will say, well, maybe within the last five years, they've, they've sort of come into their, uh, into their own. There's not a right lot out there. Now, if, for example, you started teaching maths for the CBSE curriculum, for the American curriculum, for the English curriculum, there's, there's a multitude of things you can take and, and buy for that. For this, there isn't, unfortunately. So every, practically everything I've, I've had to develop, that doesn't mean I'm not happy to share it. I am. If you're happy to send me an email, very happy to do that. Um, all, although. It is tailored very much for, for circumstance, i.e. Um, us teaching it in a very short space of time. Um, so I, I, it's almost like, like a whistle-stop tour of these various qualifications. But like I said, I'm very happy to share that. I think I've put my email on the page. Nope, error, but I've got it on another page, so you can take two pages if you weren't in my... my uh, my first presentation. Two presentations today, that's a lot of presenting. So is there, uh, are there any other, other questions that people have? Hi. Uh, I'm Philip from the Philippine School. How do you that's evaluate me. the entrepreneurial skill of the students? How do we evaluate it? Yes. Well, uh, I suppose ultimately at the end of this, uh, they, they get a qualification. So, so if they, they get an either a level one or a level two qualification out of it. So that's the first method. In terms of evaluation, that's a really good question. We, I suppose we, we, measure, we measure success, but all success is relative. So we might have students who are really, really, really happy um, going to an animal sanctuary every week and raising five dirhams a week for the animal sanctuary. <coughs> Because they sell, I don't know, some um, uh, some produce that the animal sanctuary sells, and, and for them, five dirhams might be a fantastic success. It might be volunteering their time that's a massive success. For other students, we had one group who wouldn't who doing this. Bear in mind, they only had two lunch times to do it. Who wouldn't stop until they'd made the most money for charity, and this one group made eight hundred and something dirhams profit. So in terms of evaluating, we, we set success criteria, um, but we don't try and limit students by those. And I think sometimes if you, if you sort of box in success criteria, then that will also inhibit the students on occasions. Obviously, when there's a qualification to do that, they, you know, there's, there's not a negotiation about that. They have the exam. They have to complete it and so on. But evaluation is done on a um, quite a holistic basis with enterprise. There's, there's, not a right, there's not a right lot out there that is, this is enterprise, there you go. And that was successful because 
it's, it's, it's judged very much on a school by school, event by event, curriculum by curriculum, student by student basis. So that's probably not an answer. It's quite a politician's answer, isn't it, really? I didn't, I didn't give you a proper answer. I apologise. I mean, do you use rubrics to test the skills? Rubrics. Uh, I'm a business teacher as well. So a rubric is like, is that a sort of a matrix or yeah. um, we, we don't know a, a lot of them. Uh, the qualifications like that are effectively and um, they're, they're quite wide ranging. The answers that students give for things like that. So they will do things like um, SWOT analysis and they might have to perform a strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats analysis of a given business in an exam. Um, so yeah, in terms, of, in terms of that, the success criteria, not necessarily, although the template that I'd shown earlier with the, uh, the three strands is, is quite, quite a good place to start, I would say. And, and you can use that as a, if you can use that. Uh, use that as a good place to, to start. So was the activity, um, you know, did, were they able to buy goods? Did they understand about different types of business? Were they able to work to deadlines? And, and use that as a, as a t tick list, if you like. I do apologise, it hasn't been very interactive. Um, it has been quite information giving. Uh, but I don't apologise for not keeping you past lunchtime, because lunchtime is round about now, isn't it? So if there's any other questions or if you'd like to chat to me um, after this, I'd be very happy to, to do that. Thank you very much for attending. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. And please do grab a sheet at the front as well.